This is Kilo Kilo 4 Mike November Delta, David from Clearwater, Florida. And I just got a box in the mail from Ham Radio Outlet with my new Comet RS840 antenna mount, 5 meters cable, and some extra grounding strap. And my new ATIS, Yezu ATIS 120A. I'm very excited. So we've taken the Comet RS840 out of the box, or the packaging. And it um, feels pretty sturdy. It's a nice heavy duty mount. Um, I like the fact that I got a little dust cover to protect it uh, when I'm not using the antenna. And uh, I like the fact that it's got this nice uh, thick uh, grounding plate when it connects to the frame. Uh, looks uh, and feels pretty solid. Uh, the Allen keys. And this grounding strap I told you about earlier, that was something extra that I purchased. Um, and I, they threw it in the packaging. But uh, going to ground everything down good. All the doors, the hood, everything, trunk lid, and uh, maybe the radio with this instead of what I got right now. So we'll see how that happens. And uh, like uh, this small little section here, uh, I believe it disconnects for uh, passing through the weather stripping. But we'll see. i got to play around with this a little bit more. But, uh, yeah, this ATIS is a pretty compact, small package here. Let's see how, uh, got a dust cap, stickers, and manual. And, uh, antenna, stinger, antenna element. I should probably do this with two hands. I think I'm going to do that. So we don't have any accidents dropping it. <laughs> so that's it. That's all there is to it. Just a thing on the helmet. Alright. This is our uh, antenna platform. It's a 2011 Nissan Xterra. And I chose my location on the passenger side because of Obvious drive through lunchtime, uh, possible accidents, and or when the wife takes the truck. I'm gonna mount it a little bit low, right about here, right above the tail, right hand tail light. Uh, hopefully, enough of the antenna, top of the antenna will be exposed to be effective, but at the same time, keeping the main body of the antenna low enough um, to be level and also um, just keep it from being too tall to hit anything and I prepped the surface <clears throat> there's a I might have went overkill but uh, this is a this area right here has uh, this bead of um, weather stripping um, sealant type of uh, material and I cut a section out and brought it down to bare metal. Now I may protect this with some uh, something, but uh, for now, this plate right here that the comet came with, um, I'm gonna put it in that spot and clamp down. So we got a nice, good, solid grounding area. And then I'm gonna make sure that the uh, loosen one of these bolts and I'm gonna ground the actual door to the frame make sure we're getting a good uh, ground and not just uh, these hinge points here um, and uh, definitely I'm not gonna rely on this strut for a good ground so uh, let me clamp it up and I'll show you how it looks okay here we go um, mount is in place as you can see um, the metal plate is uh is wedged in between making a contact between the set screws the plate and squeezing against the body 
so um, that's uh, how we did it. Here we go. Got the wire running through here. I'm not too crazy about that, but uh, fine-tune that later. I got some uh, little sticky pads for uh, mounting zip ties and just put a couple there. And there's one thing I didn't think about. Uh, the thin cable is uh, only so long, or so, should I say short, so uh, typically the antenna I would have mounted it up higher and this thinner piece of coax would have um, went through the soundproof uh, weather stripping here somewhere. Um, but uh, this is what we ended up with and it's kind of hanging here. I already tested it a couple times. It moves out the way fairly nicely but I don't like that. Uh, I'm gonna revisit that a little later. Um, everything's uh, mounted and and it closes I don't know if you can see that it's uh, out the way but there we have it it's uh, mounted on there somewhat level I have to make a little adjustment there um, but uh, it uh, looks uh, Pretty good, so far so good. Alright, we got the antenna hooked up now. And we're just going to go into this Yezu 857 menu option by holding down function. And we're just going to scroll to option number 20. Cat linear or tuner. And I took the tuner out of here. at FC40 tuner. Uh, it's great, quick. But um, I want to be able to use my cat port, and uh, this uh, ATIS 120 doesn't require the use of the cat port. So I'm going to scroll to cat, and then I'm going to go to option 85. Option 85, and the options are off. Addis HF, Addis HF plus 50, or all. All is if you had a diplexer, duplexer, you get the, you gotta look that one up, I get confused on that one, but um, diplexer, so you can use the HF and VHF, UHF ports out of the radio um, to go into that antenna and work on all bands. But in our case, I got a separate VHF, UHF dual band antenna, so I'm just gonna use the Addis HF and 50. down function get out of that menu and we just hold down tune and it's done. all right go ahead and hit the hold down the tune button just kilo kilo four Mike November Delta mobile Roger that. I appreciate the comeback. I'm very excited. I just installed this brand new ATIS 120 in the mobile. Uh, I'm running a Yezu 857 100 watts with an ATIS 120 Alpha um, on a Nissan Xterra. And the call again is Kilo Kilo 4 Mike November Delta. The call the handle's David. It's a pleasure. Thank you so much. Okay, David. Uh, a little difficult to copy there.
transmitting from the mobile with a UAV 857 and an ADIS 120 running 100 watts. Round 5. Tampa Bay Florida. 